This is the photograph of Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, the Lord Jesus Christ, overlaid on the Shroud of Turin. Now, we are staying in Castel Gandolfo, it's about 25 kilometres from Rome, in a lovely old mansion, <laughs> in need of much maintenance, but it, it's lovely. It would have been just glorious in its former days. Now, it's owned by a lady who lives with her older sister, two sons and their girlfriends. The lady had eight children in all, and then seven years ago her husband died. He must have been a relatively young man, probably around 50 years old. At the same time, her daughter went to a shop and she never came home. However, this week she was found and arrangements for a reunion are in progress. You can hear more about that in the previous video we did talking about just that. Now, when we first arrived, we sat in the kitchen with the family and told them who we were. They're all being Catholic, as 90% of Italians are. The two ladies and girls were delighted, but one boy was uh, shocked not believing in God at all. He suffered from a rare disease and uh, we have since cleaned his blood. The owner of the house, the younger sister, <clears throat> is 537 weeks younger than I. This number is the distance to the far wall of the King's Chamber from the Grand Gallery Great Step. Here it is, the uh, distance from the Grand Gallery Great Step on the left there into the far wall of the King's Chamber, 537 pyramid inches and the difference in age between the Christ and Jessapina, 537 weeks. Now, her sister, her older sister, Louisa, is 1,694 days younger than I. And that number is Emmanuel, which means, and is true from their perspective, God with us. The name is found in Matthew 1.23, which reads, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. This verse has a Greek gematria of 8,880 and 888 is Jesus in Greek gematria. What this tells us, the events of this family's birth and location reveals pre-arranged destiny. The house is 777,777 ,777 inches from where Pope Benedict was a prisoner of Francis when at uh, Castel Gandolfo. Now, the Great Comet of 1769 was discovered by Messier, French astronomer, on August the 8th. It was then sighted by Lieutenant Cook, who sailed to Tahiti to observe the transit of Venus on June the 3rd, 1769. He was sailing back from Antarctica, noting it in the Endeavour ship's log, August the 30th. 1769. With modern astronomy software is past 0 0.0777 AU from Earth on 8, 8 that's the 8th of August in 1769. Messier, the tail length exceeded 90 degrees. The distance in time from August the 8th, 1769, when Messier sighted the comet, when adding 88,888 days, arrived at December the 20th, 2012, which just happens to be the birth date of Christ's stepdaughter. Now, this is the setup of the planets at uh, 6 p.m. or 1800 hours on the 8th of August next week, 2013. You see there Jupiter to Saturn, 13.65, Neptune to Jupiter.
Yes, so you've got Saturn to Neptune, 3495, and then Neptune to Jupiter, 3278, all adding up to 81.38. Now this number as days is 1162.6 weeks. And of course that is the number, the width of the antechamber, which is 116.26 pyramid inches. And the age that the Christ was when he married Lucifer in the flesh, he was 1162.6 weeks old. And... August the 8th, it's actually the beginning, it's the end of Lunation 1120, beginning, uh, going into Lunation Going back here, the pyramid height, <coughs> 5,813 pyramid inches. You can see there the width of the antechamber, 11, 6.26 pyramid inches. And then written as weeks, 11.62.6 weeks is 8138 days. Of course, the height of the pyramid on each side of the king's coffer. The distance between the walls on each end of the king's coffer. All these marvellous synchronicities with uh, numbers. That's what it's all about. It's all about the numbers. Okay, <clears throat> what have we got here? We've got the Nell Street address location where the Christ lived for 13.13 years with Mary Magdalene. The distance from that location to the South Pole is the same number, this time in kilometres, as you saw previously, the completed height of the pyramid in inches, 5813. And the distance around the Earth at the latitude that the Nell Street address was sitting on, 31. 680 kilometers, so 31,680 kilometers, is 3168, and 3168 is the total of the Greek gematria for Lord 800, Jesus 888, Christ 1480. They all add up to 3168. God measures his temple, which is the earth. This is where the revelation of himself is hidden within the measure of his temple, the earth. It's not in the pages of a book that has been manipulated by evil men to trap all mankind. So God has to come back a second time to spring us all from the prison, if you like. Set the captives free. And I might say it's been a difficult job for him since everybody's so glued. Now we're going back over old territory here again. Just to reiterate, you can slow these down and really get these numbers into your minds what it's all about. The proving is the location on the planet, six o'clock, eighth of August twenty thirteen, six PM. There's the distances. The Mercury there at 1.11 AU, and of course, 111, Pope Benedict the 16th was the 111th Pope, and it is the birth date, the rebirth date of the Lord Jesus Christ, being January the 11th in Australia, where he was reborn. We write the date as the month second, actually, we actually write the day first, 11. Of January, but the matter it doesn't matter which way you write it. One eleven or eleven one, it's all the same. It's three ones. Okay, moving right along. Here we are now. The combined distance from Earth is one hundred one point eight three astronomical units. So the combined distance of all of the planets from the Earth one hundred one point eight three astronomical units. That number, 1018, means to arbitrate, to govern, or rule. Hmm. 
Now, at the same time as the triangular shape between Earth, Mercury, Venus, Earth is 3.42 astronomical units. And in Greek, it means renovation, renewing, to renew. Add to the Earth, Mercury, Venus, Earth equals 35.1. 351 in the Greek is examination. Hebrew, interrogative, where? 3510, nephros, the inmost mind, within the reins. Now, the distances to planets from the Earth can be measured precisely. August the 8th, 2013, aligns with time, and so the Great Comet of August the 8th, 1769, marked time as a sign in the heavens, as all heavenly events are. One could rightly say the domain of God while the earth pays the price of free will. The innocent always falls prey to the sword. And thus it was necessary for God himself to come to the earth as Jesus, die and prove immortality that all who love God can partake of in the end time, when all who have lived will be reborn to the earth for judgment and sentence carried out. So this is what time we are in now and why it is referred to as the end of times or the end times. It's the end of the times of reincarnation of the soul. All souls have had opportunities to get it right throughout their previous lives. So everybody is back on the earth for God's judgment and the sentence it's actually the sentencing to be carried out. And that's why it is so particularly evil. At this time, all evil is on the earth for the execution of their sentence. And of course you have the satanic driven media which, which shapes public opinion. It is the last time. Reading from 1 John 2.22 2.22 being the hour that the Christ was reborn to the earth in the morning. His adult birth weight, 3 times 74, he's 74 inches high. 3 times 74 is 222. And of course 222 is the number of verses within the KJV 1611, which is a tool only, where the words wisdom and truth are each found 222 times. In it. So let's read. Who is a liar but, that, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. This is Francis, known as Pope Francis. We refuse to call him Pope. He is not Pope. He is Francis. It continues, 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. 2 John 1 7 For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an Antichrist. This is Francis. He has denied that the Christ has come in the flesh. Now the world order is not new, it's ancient and is based on evil. Francis recently went to Rio and at 6.18 Rio time, it was on the 25th wasn't it babe? The 24th it started in Rio, the 24th of July that is, uh, time the position of the stars revealed Peter the rock. Now, while there, of course, Francis was confronted by homosexual protesters, gay, gay rights and all the rest of some of the most disgusting and vile uh, scenes captured, shown in a bit. Now, the Latin number, numbers for the Vicar of Christ has a gematria of 666 in Latin. So there it is. Vicaris, Filide, grand total 666 in Gematria.
This does not mean that all former popes were evil. Some were not. It only applies to the Antichrist mentioned by John in the end time, this time now. He made it clear there were many Antichrists prior to Francis, but only one is the Antichrist, and it is Francis. The term Vicar of Christ means the righteous Pope acts as Christ with full authority from heaven. The Antichrist must be the Pope after Revelation 17.11. As it states, there will be seven Popes and one of the seven will be the Pope of Rome after the Vatican is destroyed. I named Pope Benedict XVI after explaining he is alive and of the seven. He actually is number seven. Then the beast will be destroyed. Francis, the abomination that makes desolate. Rome will be cleansed and Benedict as Peter II or Petros Romanos, he, the reincarnate of Peter, the first Pope of Rome, will be with Christ himself, the man who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Reading from Luke 16, 15, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Revelation 21, 27 And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, the number 2127 is Hebrew and it is Zia, a genetic key of the house of David, found in 1 Chronicles 5.13. The latest Pope has proven he is Antichrist when Benedict met with him, March the 23rd, 2013, and told him that Christ was back and I had solved the church problems with Vatican III. Basically, when Francis rejected the Pope's announcement, he identified himself as the biblical Antichrist in prophecy. First John 2.18, quoting, Little children, it is the last time, and is as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. The Jesuit oath upon the floor is a red cross at which the postulant or candidate kneels. The superior hands him a small black crucifix, crucifix which he takes in his left hand and presses to his heart. And the superior at the same time presents to him a dagger which he grasps by the blade and holds the point against his heart, the superior still holding it by the hilt and thus addresses the postulant. Now, the superior, and, and within the, you can see that they are not Roman Catholic, because this is what he says. My son, heretofore you have been taught to act the dissembler among Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man among the reformers to be a reformer, among the Huguenots to be a Huguenot, among the Calvinists to be a Calvinist, among other Protestants generally to be a Protestant and obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all the vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope, black Pope, and even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. Black Pope, not the Roman Catholic Pope. The 
You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace and incite them to deeds of blood involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace. This is all straight out of the Talmud. To take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother, Jesu, who might be engaged on the other side, but openly opposed to that which you may be connected. Might be connected only that the church might be the gainer in the end, in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace, and that the end justifies the means. And so this is the oath that Francis has taken. He is undoubtedly the Antichrist. Continuing, you have been taught your duty as a spy to gather all statistics, facts and information in your power from every source to ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of Protestants and heretics of every class and character as well as that of the merchant, the banker, the lawyer among the schools and universities, in parliaments and legislatures and the judiciaries and councils of state and to be all things to all men for the Pope's sake whose servants we are unto death. Now this is the extreme oath of the Jesuit. Now in the presence of Almighty God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Michael, the Archangel, the Blessed St. John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul, and all the saints and sacred hosts of heaven, and to you, my ghostly Father, the Superior General, of the Society of Jesus, founded by St. Ignatius Loyola in the pontificate of Paul III and continued to the present, do by the womb of the Virgin, the Matrix of God and the Rod of Jesus declare and swear that His Holiness the Pope is Christ's Vice-Regent and is the true and only head of the Catholic or Universal Church throughout the earth, and that by virtue of the keys of binding and loosing, given to his holiness by my Saviour Jesus Christ, he hath power to depose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths and governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation, and that they may, be, may safely be destroyed. Therefore, to the utmost of my power, I shall and will defend this doctrine of His Holiness, right and custom against all usurpers of the heretical or Protestant authority, whatever, especially the Lutheran of Germany, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and the now pretended authority and churches of England and Scotland, and the branches of the same now established in Ireland and on the continent of America and elsewhere and all adherents in regard that they may be usurped and heretical opposing the sacred mother, Church of Rome. I do now renounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince or state, named Protestants or liberals, or obedience to any of the laws, magistrates or officers. I furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity present, present, make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants and liberals, as I am directed to do to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex or condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wounds of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. Francis swore this oath. Now, we presented this oath to an Italian young man outside of La Repubblica, newspaper office. He read the oath. He just looked up into the face of Jesus and he said with that lovely, he says, 
This is violence. This is not Jesus. <laughs> and then within about two minutes, he realized that he was speaking to Jesus. Oh, here we go. Continuing. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poisoned cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poniard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honour, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed so to do by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Now Francis swore this oath and he now holds the position of Pope, King and Black Pope as well, the unholy trinity of the devil. Is there any doubt that Francis had no problem imprisoning Pope Benedict XVI, kidnapping Sister Maria della Rosa and Father Giuseppe Ciavello and charging him with treason? Later we were sent emails from his staff, that uh, this is the staff of Francis, that Giuseppe had been shot dead, the leaden bullet. So dreadful an oath, all in the name of Barry and Jesus, it is beyond my comprehension. Oh, and then it continues uh, next to the minor rank. I have actually read this with, with, in another upload. This is what it's from. You can just read there. I don't particularly want to go over it again. Not enough. Makes me sick. Okay, here we are. Now, this is, um, what's his name? Francis. The Antichrist on the front of Time magazine. Which, of course, is the New World Order, mag order magazine. <clears throat> And uh, as they play their little games, the M is always placed in a position denoting the horns of the devil over whoever their minion is. Here it is, the people's pope. Remember that the devil deceives the whole world. So as Francis flies into Rome and is mobbed by the hordes, we think he's just marvellous. He deceives the whole world. Now, this is uh, some of the gay protesters doing what they do best. Look ludicrous. Disgusting, filthy. Tattooed, of course, the mark of Cain. And... Uh, they have to violate anything. So perverse are they. And of course it's all aimed at Jesus. Why? Why? <laughs> because they know he is God. And God hates anything that perverts his creation. And he created them. Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve or Eve and Yvette. There they are, piling up their crosses and smashing them, whatever it is that they're doing. Abomination that makes desolate. There she is, Queenie. Top of the heap. Not quite. Now, if you've not gathered by now, the Bible is a demonized, adulterated abomination with countless alterations and additions. The first five books of the Bible are not the oldest books, but the largest. Genesis is the first book, but the next four is man-made to make it appear God, note the small g, posing as God, big G, the same soul, as Jesus, Yahweh in Jesus, known as Joshua or Jesus, who was God the Father in the flesh. Now, get a load of this. This is what Christians around the world are expecting. Well, they have, they've been deceived and deluded. And this is, uh, 
why. So the God of the uh, books after Genesis, the next four books, known as the Torah, he the psychopath, hate-filled monster, <laughs> who must have had a change of heart once conceived in the Virgin Mary, forgot the satanic command of kill, rape and pillage, to have Jesus say, no, <laughs> I was only kidding, God is love and I am him. Moving right along to July 19th, 2013. Italy's largest weekly magazine reported that Francis Bergoglio, note the gog, the clue there, appointed as Prefect of the Vatican Bank, his trusted man, a known sodomite who has been operating a gay network out of Bergoglio's residence at the Domus Sancte Martha. The Espresso's investigative report indicates that Bergoglio cannot feign ignorance. On June 6, 2013, Bergoglio admitted to the press that there was a gay lobby within his Vatican and stated that he was too disorganised to do anything about it. Then on July 15th, it seems that he was in fact, has in fact, succumbed to the Vatican gay lobby. Bergoglio appointed Monsignor Battista Rica as his trusted man prelate of the Vatican Bank, which technically bears the misleading title Institute of Religious Works. Now, I did cover this in another video called uh, The Antichrist Francis and the Sodom Sodomite Prelate of the Bank. <laughs> now, Rika will have the power to access all of the bank's proceedings and documents and attend all of the meetings, both of the Cardinalate Commission of Oversight and of the bank's supervisory board. When Bergoglio gave in to the gay lobby, Espresso Italy's main weekly magazine splashed the information across the front cover of its July 19, 2013 issue with the banner title La Gay, no, sorry, La Lobby Gay, no translation needed. Signor Rica is a known sodomite. He served at Uruguay's papal nunciature in 1999, Montevideo being just across the Rio del Plata, a mere 250 kilometres from Buenos Aires, where Bergoglio was the church archbishop from 1998. Rica, as the Nunciature's Chasse de Fer ad interim, gave his gay lover and army captain a residence in the Nunciature with a regular position and salary. As reported by El Espresso, the intimacy of the relations between Rica and Captain Hari was so open as to scandalise numerous bishops, priests, nuns and lay people at the nunciature. When a new papal nuncio was appointed at the beginning of 2000, he immediately found the open menage intolerable and informed the Vatican authorities about it. In 2001, Bergoglio's now trusted man, so we, you know, the now trusted man who is Rica, but back in 2001, he was beaten up at a gay bar and had to be dragged back to the Nunciature. Also in that year, the elevator of the Nunciature became stuck and the fireman who responded caught Monsignor Rica in the elevator car virtually in flagrant delicto with a youth identified by police as a gay prostitute. When Rica was finally forced out of the Nunciature, he left behind his personal luggage which contained an enormous quantity of condoms and pornographic material. This is a letter that has been sent and received by La Repubblica, sent yesterday, Tuesday, July 29th. Reading, my husband and I have travelled from Australia with evidence from Pope Benedict, our very good friend. Pope Benedict asked us to get the word out to the world what is happening. His own communication has been cut off and he is under house arrest by Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. Through the history of the Vatican City State since 1929, there have been two good popes. One was murdered, John Paul I, and the second was Pope Benedict XVI. 
The Conclave of 1958 was hijacked by the devil in Freemasonry. Angelo Roncalli, known as John XXIII, was not the elected. He rose up in the Conclave to usurp Cardinal Siri from Genoa, who was elected by the Conclave. Cardinal Siri was threatened in the Conclave and so, under duress, gave way to the evil faction and Roncalli walked out as Pope. Mm -hmm. Roncalli was the agent of the Jews behind Freemasonry and so the Vatican was overtaken by the devil. Today, Francis is the epitome of evil as a Jesuit who has sworn an oath that is an abomination to the Christ. In the private meeting between Pope Benedict and Francis at Castel Gandolfo on March 23, 2013, Pope Benedict told Francis that the Lord Jesus Christ had returned and that he, Benedict, had been in communication with him through email since March 10, 2013, before the conclave began. This made the conclave illegal as the Church's responsibility is to announce the return of the Christ who takes over the Church and upon, Vatican, uh, upon Benedict's request, Christ wrote Vatican III, which Benedict said solved all of the Church and world problems. Pope Francis refused to believe Pope Benedict, even though Pope Benedict gave much evidence to Francis, including a video prepared for Francis by the Christ explaining all things to him, including prophecy of the times we are in. Five days later, Francis, according to Archbishop George Gunswain, still refused to accept that the Christ is returned, even though 1.2 billion Catholics in the world have been waiting and praying for the return of the Christ for each of their lives. Pope Benedict wrote an apostolic letter announcing and identifying the returned Lord Jesus Christ, released to the world through the internet on March 26, 2013. Pope Benedict had made a video recording announcing the return of Salvatore Mundi to be aired on RAI TV on March 30, 2013, along with the documentary of the Shroud of Turin which Benedict said is a perfect match of the photos sent to him of the Christ today. The people at RAI TV told Pope Benedict that Francis had stopped the announcement. Benedict said it was monstrous what Francis had done. Pope Benedict's friend and confidant, Father Giuseppe Ciavello, and his biographer, Sister Maria Della Rosa, were both taken by men working for Francis on the night of April 2, 2013. They are still missing and Giuseppe is feared dead. As well, another friend of Giuseppe is missing, feared dead. His name is Monsignor Giovanni Rossini, who was in Toronto, Canada at the time. Giuseppe was charged with treason for his part in helping Benedict with the apostolic letter announcing the return of the Christ. Men identifying themselves as investigators working for Francis took over the computer and private email account of Pope Benedict. They cut off his communication with the Christ after sending the Christ emails telling what they had done to Father Giuseppe and the other. Pope Benedict has been isolated by surrounding him with new nuns who know nothing of the events. Archbishop George Ganswain knows that the Christ has returned and has sworn to say nothing of it to Francis or anyone else. Pope Benedict asked us to use all of the electronic means available to get the word out about these events. We have read about the evil of Francis beginning to be exposed by your publications, so we trust, trust that La Republica is not afraid to publish the truth. When the truth is published, Francis will be overthrown by the Christ. The Lateran Treaty will be abolished, and the Holy Mother Church, the Bride of Christ, will be restored, led by Pope Benedict, renamed Peter Second or Petros Romanus by the Christ. Rome will be restored as the eternal city of God because the Christ is here, fulfilling prophecy. Honour will go to the Italians who have maintained a constant faith in Jesus. Vatican III will bring all faiths, Protestant, Muslim and all religions, back into the Roman Catholic Church as the universal church of the Christ. The news of it made Pope Benedict XVI cry with tears of joy. Christ is identified by the Great Pyramid of Egypt, which is the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt, Rub Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20, and the measuring of the earth. The numbers of the measure reveal the truth when those numbers are translated into language through the use of gematria using the English, Greek and Hebrew alphabets. 
The use of gematria was banned centuries ago for a reason. The Jews knew that the Christ would identify himself in his second coming by using the number codes of words recorded in history by men who were inspired to write the words. The same Jews who crucified Jesus are behind the infiltration into the Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church and the perversion of it through the filth that made Benedict VI and the writing of Vatican II an abomination allowing the Jews to infiltrate. Pontius Pilate was the friend of Jesus. He protected Jesus for three years from the Jews who crucified him. Caiaphas himself repented and is documented in letters written by him under the Vatican. All Jews must repent as did Caiaphas, the knowledge of which has been removed from the Christian and the Jews. Under the Vatican are rooms used for Satan worship, one room has Lucifer painted on the wall. Freemasonry has dominated the Vatican, Freemasonry which is a front for the Jews whose God is Lucifer. This is just the beginning of much that has to be published for the people of Italy. Now, of course, going down on your knees, this, sorry, that was the end of the letter to Republica. This is uh, going down on your knees in the Vatican has an entirely different connotation to the idea of prayer. Today we have a Satanist black pope, a Jesuit monster, that has sworn to rip open the wounds of enemies' women, tear out the unborn and smash the babies' heads against a wall. Demonstrating another coincidence, meaning God will prove by coincidence. This is the distance between the birth of Pope Benedict, April 16th, 1927, to the date that he announced his retirement, 11th of February 2013, which again coincidentally was 84 years to the date when the Vatican City State was declared through the Lateran Treaty. So it's a distance of 31348 days. 3134 in Greek is Maranatha, of Aramaic origin meaning our Lord has come, and an exclamation of the approaching divine judgment. The week's total, 4478, is Rachel of Hebrew origin, 7354, Rachel, the wife of Jacob, Rachel. From 7353, an unused root meaning to journey, a you, the females being the predominant element of a flock, as a good traveller. You, sheep, equals the area in square inches of the Shroud of Turin when you multiply length by breadth of 171 by 43 inches, 7353 square inches. The image on the Shroud of Turin. It's the blatantly obvious, the world's first photograph left for the pure in heart who, as Jesus the Christ said, would see God. So yes, it is the blatantly obvious for the pure in heart and Benedict is pure in heart because he saw God within Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, whose image it is in the Shroud of Turin. Now this is from Las Alamos Laboratories. Two optical technicians discovered the 3D effect of the Shroud. This information is generally suppressed because it absolutely proves God. No other cloth, painting, whatever, in the entire world can produce this 3D image. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth was totally disgusted with the church. Days after he announced his retirement, February the eleventh, twenty that should be thirteen eighty four years after the Vatican was formed, and his retirement of course came into effect February the twenty eighth. He saw my photograph and declared it was my face in the shroud. 
Ryan Leonard, Go Lightly Marshall. The Resurrected. Reincarnate. Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <laughs>